Greetings my friends, how are you doing? This is Zev from Zed Outdoors and I hope you're having an awesome day. So today I am with a dear friend of mine, Peter Kovac of Soulwood Creations. Peter, how are you doing? I'm doing very well, thank you. Right, so this video kicks off a mini two-part series on carving axes. In this video, what Peter is kindly going to be talking through is the ergonomic features of what makes good ergonomics of a carving axe handle. Now the reason why I've come to Peter to tackle this subject is if you're not familiar with Peter, Peter is behind Solber Creations and Peter is a full-time tool maker and green woodworker. Originally hailing from Hungary, lived in the UK for many years in London and now settled up here in beautiful West Yorkshire with his family. Now in this particular video, like I said, we're going to be looking at a detailed understanding of axe handle ergonomics for carving and in this second a video of this mini two-part series what Peter is going to be doing is in incredible detail and length going to be teaching you from start to finish on how to make and fit a carving axe handle so he's going to be setting the kind of foundation here in terms of theory in this particular video and then building on from a practical standpoint in the second video what's also important with this video is this is a topic that's not hugely discussed obviously you have conventional axes for outdoors use and bushcraft and whatnot but when it comes to carving axes there's a lot of nuances right yeah, I would um, like to believe, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that make a good thing. And even for me, I, I can be a bit of a brute in terms of my understanding at times. For me, it's just a carving axe, right? But the more I'm learning, the more I'm getting out there and doing things, and the more you kind of yourself delve into the carving world, green woodworking, spoon carving, etc., the more you start to appreciate, actually, there are differences between good carving axes and bad carving axes and everything in between. And what Peter is going to be doing in this video is hopefully demystifying a lot of things and bringing a much more clearer understanding Standard, educating me because this is a topic I don't know a huge amount about myself and hopefully yourself too so without further ado we're going to get straight into this video I will mention that if the second video is already out by the time you're watching this a link to that will also be down below and I will also mention just before we kick off this video that this is two-part series as part of a broader series that I'm filming with Peter the first video was a detailed spoon carving video that we've done a two-part mini series on carving a uh, knife handles the ergonomics as well as the making and fitting of the carving knife and now this is finishing off the five part series on carving axes so peter with your kind permission we'll get started let's do it so guys without further ado hope you enjoyed the rest of this video where peter kovach of solver creations is going to be talking through the good ergonomics of a carving axe handle So Peter, before we get into the meat and bones of talking about carving axe handle ergonomics, however a simple question it may appear, but there's probably people thinking out there, well, why should I even bother about ergonomics? If it carves, then it's fine. So what would your kind of response be to that? Well, my response is they're right. You can use a piece of wood, put an axe head on it, and it probably will work. But... Uh, the fine detail is will really the diff main difference will come over time. So the longer you carve, uh, the more differences you will notice actually how it feels in your hand, how much fatigue you will feel, how many blisters you will have on your hand, and also how pleasurable the experience itself is will become. Because if you have a really well thought out handle, which is really in symbiosis like it's a symbiotic relationship with the axe head and the handle and also your body so they all three things need to be perfectly in harmony with each other to create a really nice experience to carve and following on from that for the people that may not be familiar with you and so recreations um could you talk a little bit about kind of your 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 background and also your experience with making carving axe handles um, yeah, so, so my background, I'm a furniture maker by, by trade and recently I finished a, a university course on uh, product and furniture design. So uh, I have obviously a design background, but uh, I think what makes me qualify for talking about this is that I spent many, many years and made hundreds of carving decks, handles and I really meticulously tried to examine what the difference between a uh, a piece of wood and a really well facet, uh, sought out faceted carving axe handle um, and also myself I de developed tendinosis in my hand on the beginning of my carving journey 
because I used tools uh, that it wasn't really suited for me so they didn't really work in an ergonomic way so it didn't work with my body so that's how I started to develop my own kind of handles and that's become a bit of a wider product and now make access for other people making woodworking tools for other people as well because they kind of agree with my findings so that's why I feel that what I think is right is probably right and we'll agree with other people as well and just to kind of conclude with this kind of initial discussion there's a lot of very experienced and professional spoon carvers and green woodworkers that use your axes so would I be right in assuming also that if there is any feedback then you're getting it from people that are in the know and actually using your axes yes yes uh, I do have quite a bit of feedback and and luckily they're mostly positive uh, if there's any issues with the axes obviously I rectify it straight away so um, for me as a maker for me is the most important thing is my is my reputation so I want to make sure that it's uh, untarnished and and every single piece I give you know leaves my workshop is in pristine condition and is the best uh, I can do so getting straight onto the topic at hand where would you like to begin I think uh, let's start well let's start on the general axe handles so in here you can see three axes um, so the main difference between these that these two I have made and this one we made by someone else is both of all three of them are a bearded axe um, setup so this axe is my bushcraft axe so this is the one I abuse uh, and not treat it very nicely um, I made a really shoddy job to putting this like a brass um, guard for the handle if I'm splitting some wood but it's not really relevant at the moment what's more important that the main difference between these axes and this one is this one first of all doesn't have a faceted handle so it's just an all rounded handle you still have a palm swell uh, and it's just it's relatively straight so you only have a really tiny amount of back sweep end of the day I think when you're talking about ergonomics and the good handle design it's really important to, to stress that so I think the most important with, with the axe handles in general that you shouldn't hang up on it too much on the ergonomics and design and all the fine details because ultimately you need an axe that is functional if you're happy with this handle I'm happy with this handle to use it out in the woods I have no issue but I can straight away notice over time if I really look into it that the handle becomes slippy quite easily so this has a really smooth sanded finish on it and it starts slipping and turning in my hand so again it has a bit of an oval shape to it uh, which is really good because it's kind of stopping me from twisting in my hand however this rounded design once your hands start to get sweaty as well it just really start turning in your hand as you strike in with it and as it gets thinner on the end it's even more so um, so that's what creates the fatigue of your hand because you really need to start gripping it to keep it steady as you're working with it so I think the main thing to do with the influence of Lee Stouffer I started adding facets to my axe handles and to my knife handles as well so if you in general I think I've stressed that before but if you just look at your palm how is and your, how is your hand so if you're gripping an object this kind of naturally creates your hand like facets and also on the front you have a lot smaller radius than on the back so this kind of inclines me to create an axe handle and a knife handle that it's on the front a little bit elongated tapered and then the back you have a rather um, larger radius than on the front so the, my first step was to actually add facets to a handle so that's kind of reducing this kind of turning action on your hand because the facets they, they uh, serve as a sharp edge and it's kind of just like wedging itself into your palm and it's stopping it rotating and also uh, it reduces the chances of blisters because also the blisters uh, created as it's kind of rubs on your skin as it's turning and moving um, the second uh, addition I've tried out is the back sweep on the axis so by adding some a bit of a back sweep to the axe this will encourage as the axe is working in your hand this creates a slicing motion so obviously I discussed this as just a general axe is really straight handle uh, but now move on to mine and uh, what I like to think that these are 
uh, a quite a quite ideal tool for the for these tasks specifically. So let's start on the larger one. So this is my number two carving axe I do uh, and make for people. So obviously, first of all, is features the one as I was talking about the facets. So you have uh, two smaller facets on the back on either side and two longer ones, and just a little bit break down this sharp edge on the front as well. Um, I've created this sort of on right underneath the uh, the axe head. You created a lot uh, wider part of the handle and as it gets to the end it starts to tapers down so when you when you holding the axe on the very end just underneath the palm swell you tend to use a really powerful strokes and a cuts with your axe so you need the most power and when you create this power you want to feel this really positive feedback on your handle in terms of you can apply plenty of grip so you don't feel like you're going to lose your axe and this really prominent palm swell here is really gives you that confidence that it's not going to fly out your handle so that's why I really make this really prominent if you compare it to this one you can see how much of a difference these two have so I just wanted to have this really nice like nesting in your hand uh, so this thins down in the end because as you choke up on the axe so it's called when you hold it on the right underneath the hand it's choking up on it that you really do like fine carvings and you do the fine control of the axe so you don't need as much of a strength to grip it but it's nicer for that case if it really fills out your palm and you feel you have plenty plenty of control over your axe um, talking about the palm swell the palm swell is really is there to first of all to stop the axe flying out of your hand so this will be a really nice positive uh, uh, like a stop and it swells up to the side and to the front and back as well but also mine have uh, quite a large palm swell the reason being because this acts as a bit of a counter counterweight for my axis so even if you can push down the center of gravity you know down the handle as far as you can uh, then it's just really improved the balance of the X. Um, obviously you could put some weights in the X and you can go crazy things but between the balance between aesthetics and function I think this is a happy medium just gives you a little bit of a better balance and also gives you a really comfortable uh, grip on the end so we talked about the facets this again is features this uh, a little bit tapered front so if I would cut this X handle in half and we would look at the cross section so this would be the block of the X uh, for the start with and I create a longer longer facet on either side and two facets on the back and I break down these edges as well so this kind of creates, this is a little bit exaggerated, but you get the idea. So as I was discussing before, on the front you have this smaller radius, on the back you have the larger radius. Uh, and also these facets on the side really helps with your fingers. When you position your fingers, it's kind of like just lies on top of it. And it really helps with your grip to feel really positive and just you get a really good feedback from each strike with your axe. Um, again so this kind of construction you will see the second part of this video series actually when we make with Zed uh, an axe handle from scratch so you see how we'll make this and hopefully then it will make a lot more sense. Um, moving on to the so back to this handle um, I think again all of this I'm saying I'm stating these are my findings and I found them to be working for me and for the X handles I make and the axes I make for other people um, so the back sweep again the the larger the back sweep the kind of more uh, exaggerated this kind of slicing motion be motion becomes if the axe handle is straight then when you strike him with the axe it becomes a bit of more of a chopping motion as you would cut the tree but because we have this back sweep as you as you cutting the wood as you slicing with your carving axe handle which not slicing is chopping with your carving axe handle as you see the motion it becomes a more of a slicing motion which is really ideal for carving because you can create a really smooth straight surface um, yeah so I'm not 
trying to hype up my axis, but there's a lot of uh, thought and loads of uh, experimentation gone into it. I made hundreds of handles and I made dozens and dozens of different uh, handle designs and tried to find the one I found that really works very well. There's another aspect to it, which is uh, probably more prominent on the smaller one, that uh, each X head and different X head size it depends on the weight and the shape you needs a different handle so the weight on this x head is about 250 grams smaller than on this one so on the side you see we don't have a palm swell on the sides just on the back and forth it still gives you a really safe way of using it but because we don't need that much of a counterweight i really want to use utilize this small weight of this x uh, so i just kept the whole thing nice and flat it's also a little bit quicker to make but the main reason was that you know it's, it's a small compact axe and most of the time you're going to use it uh, either you know gripping it in the middle on the very end to do the larger cuts um, yeah so if you have again uh, the other important things is the distance from the head to the very end so if i do uh, i do the number three axes which are even heavier than this one so I leave the hang handle a little bit longer as well so you can really utilize the extra weight of the head. Um, in terms of uh, another it's not necessarily the part of the handle ergonomics but I leave the wedges uh, just pressed in so friction fit they're not glued in you can pull them out and you can also tap them in further in if the handle by any reason shrinks a little bit you can just tap it in and it pushes out these sides so it's nice and firm fit if you drop your axe on the concrete and after you've been you know struck down by the gods of the spoons um, then you can actually take the head off by removing the wedge and re-grind it using different jigs the other really important part is not so much part of the ergonomics discussion but rather what makes also really good uh, axe handle so it's really important to talk about the grain orientation on your axe so what we're aiming for that the growth rings are running parallel with the side of your axe so again this will help with the longevity of your axe uh, the other important part again if your if the growth rings are running parallel with the side of your axe we assume that the actual grain it will run right along so pretty much parallel with the sides again as well all the way the length of your carving axe it's not so important with the carving axes because they not it's not the size of a falling axe so the force you'll be be you know exposed to it won't be as tremendous but again just for the longevity and make sure that the axe will serve you for many years it's good to consider that the grain running all the way on your axe the growth rings are nice and parallel with the sides and you don't have any runouts we call so this grain if you go like in an angle it might there's a chance that your axe handle will snap in half and just to touch on that is that a piece of ash that you've kind of made your handles with yes this one is so if you see this sort of ringed pattern on the top of your plank you have it's most likely the reason why because you have the growth ring nicely running parallel so if this came from a bigger a bigger piece of a plank and on the side you what you have as this ring kind of runs off to the side in here you would have a 45 degree angle kind of grain but in the middle you can get this like a perfect bit of um, wood for getting the axe handle out of if you look in the side you can see the grain is running pretty much parallel with the side so this piece of uh, ash is basically premium axe handle material so you can see how we're going to make an axe handle out of this in the next video. Perfect. And the final thing that came to mind is, we spoke about it off camera, you were talking about making sure the head itself um, is straight and it's not misaligned or anything. Yes. So um, again, this is, this is quite common, everyone probably assumes, but just to touch upon, it's really important that uh, if you look at your axe handle and axe head from right from the front, if you draw up an image on the center line, it's really important that the edge of your blade is right in line with that. It's not twisted in either way and it's not twisted like so because then it will alter what angle you're holding your axe and ultimately it can lead to trouble. If it's a little bit out, it's not an issue, it's not worth cutting the handle off, but if it's a large uh, kind of twist in that, it could definitely impact on your, on your technique and how you use your axe. So just to wrap up this video with, I want to uh, 
bringing a bit of a sawwood creations history. So this axe is um, one of the first one I ever made and I haven't, when I made this I haven't really learned the lesson very well that um, what I believe in the form follows function. So function is always should be the number one priority. So you can see I have the back sweep here the same way as I was talk talking before but I really like the idea of this big recurve on the end. It's like oh it's so cool, it's, it looks so amazing. But actually, as I started using it, I realized that this too exaggerated of a recurve will really impact how your X will behave. So if you hold it at the very end, it's kind of, if you, if you twist it ever so slightly, the whole angle of the X and the way it strikes the wood is just really been thrown off. So what I changed afterwards to have to completely remove this recurve in a way and just having the kind of this kickback on the end so this part of your hand which is like a large chunk of muscle can fit in there really nicely so this is just more likely a warning if you want to design your own handle try to avoid this massive recurve in the end it doesn't do you any good it looks cool it kind of makes the whole legs look cool but it's not something worth pursuing so just having a really gentle curve it's a lot more important and if you want to change the amount of recurve don't change the, the you know how much your hand actually curves because the grain just gonna run right across it so weakens the handle you can change the position of your axe head so if I want this to be a larger recurve I just twist my axe head in a way so having the very end just pointing in a bit different directions a little bit sweeping backwards uh, so you see the difference, it's been a long journey to getting from this axe to this axe but it's something is really, I think is worth it and something I really believe that I created a tool that is worth using for the many years to come. So there you have it my friends, that is a wrap for this video. Peter, thank you so much. No problem. So as mentioned at the very beginning, this is part one of a two part mini series. So in this part, obviously we looked at the carving ax handle ergonomics, the kind of the pros and cons and whatnot. And the reason why I need to stress that uh, Peter was obviously referencing his solar creations acts is because it's the implementation of everything he's just outlined so it's natural that he's just going to show that because really it's encompassing all the learnings as we stated throughout this video it's used by hundreds of carvers from around the world and so Peter himself along with his own experience and the fact he does this full time he does what he's talking about right it's really as simple as that so what we're going to be doing in the next video is Peter's going to be taking everything he's outlined in this video and what he does now in his solar creations acts and he's going to be teaching you from start to finish how to go from a raw piece of wood a sample of which he just showed you earlier and taking it from that all the way to a finished axe and not only is he going to do that he's actually going to show you how he personally hangs ahead as well makes a wedge literally everything is leaving no stone unturned so it's going to be a very long video but it's going to be one of those where there's going to be no stone left unturned and it's going to cover every single nuance and facet the one thing with Peter if you're not familiar with him already is that his attention to detail is immaculate so when he co goes and makes an axe handle yeah yeah there's people out there that can knock an axe handle in like 10 minutes but Peter goes the extra yard to really make sure that every nuance is covered in pristine detail so if that video is already out by the time you're watching this there'll be a link to that down below and a final reminder uh, this is part of a broader series I'm filming with Peter on my visit here to West Yorkshire in the first video we looked at Peter's process from start to finish on how he carves a wooden spoon and then we've done another two-part mini-series on carving knife handles the ergonomics as well as the making of it and fitting a knife handle so all of the links to those are going to be in the description and final two links to mention number one i'll put a link to peter's website solar creations on there you can find out about the myriad of work that he's got going on as well as have a detailed look at his, at his axes and tools etc also i would highly encourage you to join his email newsletter when you're on his website to be kept up to date on the myriad of things he has going on and you also it'll be kept up to date in terms of when he puts the axes out for sale because it does it on a kind of an order system isn't it yeah uh, so pre-order system it's a pre-order system so i release a shop update every two months or so and then you can pre-order them and then trying to just play and catch up all the time really that's it so 
Also, within that email uh, newsletter framework, Peter, as he's going to be moving forward, pandi pandemic dependent, um, is going to be looking at running courses, you know, teaching how to make axe handles, knife handles, etc. So you can be kept up to date on everything he has going on by joining his email newsletter, link below to his website. And the final link I will mention is Peter's Instagram. There'll be a link below to his Instagram profile. Alternatively, just go to Soulwood Creations, search for that in the Instagram search bar and you will find him there. Be sure to give him a follow. And on this profile, you'll be able to see his whole history of everything he has done and what he continues to do now. And his pictures of all of his different axes, the more customized axes that he does. He does a lot of cost customized work and also he does a lot of commissions. So people send him their axe heads and knife handles, etc. And Peter handles those as well as making the leather work for the sh in, in, in the sh terms of sheaves um, so you can see all the myriad of work that he gets up to so peter sincere thank you once thank again you so guys hope you enjoyed this video links to everything down below and as always i hope whatever you're doing you have a blessed day a blessed week ahead from peter kovach or soul recreations and myself at outdoors peace out